Showtime Spanish, episode 5. Es hora de pasar al siguiente nivel, de los ensayos al espectáculo. Este es tu momento, que se abra el telón. Places, everyone, it's showtime. Curtains up, light the lights, it feels just like opening night. You practiced hard, I know, but now it's time to start the show. Step into the spotlight, cause you're the star tonight. With your Spanish skills at hand, this language is at your command. You'll be understood from Madrid to Bogota, through Argentina to Nicaragua. No matter where you go, you'll have amigos. Break a leg, dig a bow, it's showtime. You are, of course, listening to Showtime Spanish. This is the podcast which will help you take your Spanish to the next level. Alba, tenemos algo un poco distinto hoy, ¿verdad? Sí, hoy tenemos nuestra telenovela Verano Español. Ya hemos conocido a Antonio, que es el padre, a Laura, que es la hija, y hoy vais a conocer a Ayona, que es la madre de la familia. En la telenovela... No todos los personajes hablan igual de bien el español. Es decir, hay algunos personajes que hablan más español y otros que hablan menos. Ayona habla muy poquito. Es decir, que Laura tendrá que ayudarla. Así pues, escucharéis a Laura y a Ayona hablando entre ellas dos y hablarán en inglés. Así os será más fácil la transición. Del inglés al español. It's probably worth giving a further explanation of what we're trying to do with Merano Español. Obviously, in this first episode, where Ayona and Laura are heading off to Spain, both of them speak English together, so you'll be hearing some English in this episode. But as the episodes progress, you'll be hearing more and more Spanish. Pues ya está, pongámonos en marcha. Os presentamos el primer episodio de Verano Español. Ayona está preparando la comida en la cocina y Antonio acaba de volver a la casa. Ayona y Laura están preparándose para su visita a España. Laura entra en la cocina. Hola, cariño. ¿Qué tal lo llevas? Hi, Dad. ¿No quieres decir hola? Sabes que cuando estés en España tendrás que hablar en español. Lo sé, pero ahora estoy en Escocia y aquí hablamos inglés. Ay, hija mía, Laura. Ayona, ¿qué piensas tú? What? What do I think about what? Don't you think that Laura needs all the practice she can get? Well, I suppose she'll have to speak in Spanish when we're in Spain. I'll be relying on you, Laura. I know, I know. Laura. Dad, my name is Laura, not Laura. Bueno, en España. Te van a llamar Laura, y no te podrás quejar. Ya, ya, ya veremos. Laura, have you finished your packing? Eso es lo que te iba a preguntar. Yes, I finished. Ya está, ya he terminado. Are you running us to the airport, Dad? Sí. Tendremos que ponernos en marcha a las tres y media, ¿vale? Did you say half past three? Sí, exacto. Lunch is almost ready. Can you help with the salad, please? Claro. I'm just going to phone Jack. Five minutes. Cinco minutos. See, I can't say some things. You'll be fine, Mum. A glass of wine y estarás hablando español perfectamente. Laura! Laura, Dad. I had a phone call from the lawyer today. 
Everything seems to have gone according to plan. Are the keys ready for us? Las llaves, is that right? Sí, las llaves están listas. The lady from the office will be waiting for you in the airport and she'll give you las llaves. You'll need to sign for them though. That's okay, I can't wait to see the house. Oye, listen, it's been many years since I've been there. I don't know what it will be like. I just hope it's comfortable enough to live in. It'll be fine. It was so kind of Tia Julia to leave us the house. I still can't quite believe it. She always promised she would. Ever since I was a child, esta casa será tuya, she used to say to me. I hope that Laura makes some friends. I'd love for her to get more confident in her Spanish. Entiende perfectamente todo lo que digo. She understands exactly what I say to her. And she can speak well when she wants to. She just needs to practice. Here you are, Laura, just in time. How was Jack? Is he going to miss you terribly? Oh, whatever, Mum. There better be an internet connection somewhere so I can talk to him in MSN. ¿Llevas tu ordenador? Sí, pero no sé si habrá wifi. Quizás los vecinos lo tengan. Mm, pues la verdad es que te hará bien separarte un poco de Jack. Lo ves demasiado a menudo. Dad, I do not. Why do you always have to go on about Jack? Pues porque no me gusta ese chico. Your dad just doesn't want you to get too serious. You're only 16. Y quizás encuentres algún chico español. Un chico muy majo, inteligente, bien educado. Alguien que te hable en castellano. Y con quien puedas practicar. Dad, Jack es mi novio. No voy a España para encontrar a ningún chico. Can you two please stop arguing and let's enjoy our last dinner together for a while? I wish you were coming too, Antonio. Ya sabes que no puedo. You know I can't. Everything is just crazy just now at work. I'll come as soon as I can. Hopefully in a couple of weeks. Laura y su madre ya están en el avión. Oh, I do hope all this goes according to plan. Stop worrying, Mum. What were you listening to? Jack downloaded an album for me before I left. It's really good. Do you still have those Spanish lessons on your iPod? See. Sí. I should help you learn some phrases before we get there. I'm okay with the basic stuff. I can say hola and adios and things like that. I just worry that people will talk at me in Spanish and won't understand a word they say. You need to help me. I will, but I won't be with you all the time. Let me teach you some useful phrases. If you want to say that you've not understood something, you can say no entiendo. Doesn't that mean I don't understand? Um, yeah, isn't that the same? What do they teach you at school? I don't understand is the present tense, and I have not understood is in the past, or the perfect tense. Why are all teachers the same? When do you stop teaching? What does it matter? If you say no entiendo, people will understand what you mean, and they'll say it slower or in different words, and then you might understand. Oh, I take your point. So, I can just say... No entiendo. Yeah, or no he entendido. I guess that's the past tense. Like, I have not understood. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see in the first place. How would you say, can you say it again please, a bit more slowly? And do you want this in the present, past or future? Laura, just tell me. You could say, puedes decirlo otra vez más despacio. Puedes decirlo otra vez. What was the next bit? Más despacio. Despacio is slow or slowly. Más despacio. Puedes decirlo otra vez más despacio. And don't forget to say, por favor. Puedes decirlo otra vez más despacio, por favor. Muy bien, mamá. Pues yo voy a dormir. Mm, that's something about sleeping. Yes, I'm going for a sleep. Can I listen to the Spanish stuff on your iPod then? Claro que sí. 
toma. Aiguna y Laura ya están en España. Han cogido un taxi desde el aeropuerto y están a punto de llegar a la casa. I can't wait to see the house. I think we're almost there. In fact, I think that house looks like the photo your dad showed me. Wow, it's amazing. Can you sort out the taxi, please? Aquí estamos. Muchas gracias. ¿Cuánto le debemos? Son 15 con 80 con las maletas. Aquí tiene. Está bien así. Muchas gracias. A ti. Que lo pasen bien. Mom, wait for me. Whoa, what's going on next door? It sounds like they're having a party. We could go and introduce ourselves. Let's just get into the house first. I need to phone your dad to see we're here. Qué guay, la casa es preciosa. What does that mean? Just that the house looks amazing. It does. I just hope we're not going to have to put up with that noise all summer long. Bueno, ¿qué tal? How was that? Hopefully you've enjoyed this first episode of Verano Español. Obviously in this episode there was quite a lot of English used between Laura and her mum and also between Antonio and Laura. But as the episodes progress you'll be hearing more and more Spanish as Laura gets to know lots of Spanish speakers and Ayuna starts to practice her Spanish a little more. And of course we'll find out exactly what's going on next door. Now, there are full notes available on our website at showtimespanish.com and these include a full script of Verano Español and also further information and explanations about the language covered in this episode. To help you understand a little more about this first episode of Verano Español, I'm going to work through some questions and answers with you just now. I'll give you the question and then we'll work together on the answer. So, pregunta número uno. ¿Dónde viven Laura y sus padres? So, obviously the question means, where do Laura and her parents live? So, can you say, they live in Scotland, but they also have a house in Spain? So, they live in Scotland, viven en Escocia, but they also have a house in Spain, pero también tienen una casa en España. Viven en Escocia, pero también tienen una casa en España. Muy bien, pues número dos. ¿Qué idiomas hablan en casa? So the question of course means... Which languages or what languages do they speak at home, in casa? So let's work out an answer for this one. Can you start by saying, Laura speaks in Spanish with her father and in English with her mother? Laura habla en español con su padre y en inglés con su madre. Alternatively, you could have said, Laura habla en castellano con su padre y en inglés con su madre. What about, Ayuna understands a little Spanish? Ayuna entiende un poco de español. Now, let's make this a little more tricky. She will have to learn more 
in order to be able to speak with people in Spain. Let's see if we can work this out. She will have to do something. So we're looking for tener que hacer algo. So tener que plus an infinitive. And if we're saying she will have to do, then we're looking for the future tense of tener. So ella tendrá que aprender. So she will have to learn more, más. Ella tendrá que aprender más in order to be able to speak. Now, think about that. In order to, there's one word in Spanish that can be used for this, para. In order to should always trigger para in your head. So, in order to be able to speak. There are two infinitives there. So, in order to be able, para poder, to speak, hablar. Para poder hablar with the people in Spain. Con la gente en España. So, she will have to learn more in order to be able to speak with people in Spain. Ella tendrá que aprender más para poder hablar con la gente en España. So, our whole answer here would be Laura habla en español con su padre y en inglés con su madre. Ayuna entiende un poco de español. Ella tendrá que aprender más para poder hablar con la gente en España. And we could also add, Antonio habla en inglés con Ayona. Meaning, of course, that Antonio speaks in English with Ayona. Pregunta número tres. Una pregunta muy fácil. ¿Quién es Jack? So, who is Jack? Well, we've probably worked out that Jack is Laura's boyfriend. Jack es el novio de Laura. Jack es el novio de Laura. Pregunta número cuatro. ¿En qué trabajan los padres de Laura? So, you should have worked out that trabajan comes from trabajar, to work. So, literally, in what work the parents of Laura? What do Laura's parents do? Now, we probably don't know yet exactly what Antonio does. So, how would we say, we don't know exactly what Antonio does? Now, did you remember that here we have to turn this in Spanish into we don't know exactly that which does Antonio? No sabemos exactamente lo que hace Antonio. We can't just say que hace Antonio. No sabemos exactamente lo que hace Antonio. But he has lots of work at the moment. He's very busy at the moment. Pero tiene mucho trabajo en este momento. No sabemos exactamente lo que hace Antonio, pero tiene mucho trabajo en este momento. Y por eso no puede ir a España. And for this reason, no puede, he can't, ir a España. Go to Spain. Now, did you pick up anything about Iona's job? Well, in the plane, Laura said to her, Why are teachers all the same? When do you stop teaching? So, Iona is a teacher. We don't know exactly what kind of teacher she is yet, but how would we say Iona is a teacher? Of course, it's Iona es profesora. And hopefully you remembered that with jobs, you don't say una profesora in this case. Iona es una profesora is wrong. You need to say Iona es profesora. No use of the indefinite article here. Pregunta número 5. ¿Qué hacen en el avión Laura y Ayona? So the question means, what do Ayona and Laura do in the plane? ¿Qué hacen en el avión? Well, Laura teaches some phrases to her mum, some Spanish phrases. How would you say that in Spanish?
There are probably a couple of correct answers here in a sense. The one that sounds most Spanish would be Laura le enseña a su madre algunas frases en español. Laura le enseña a su madre algunas frases en español. Ok, let's move on. Número 6. ¿Cómo llegan a la casa? So, how do they arrive at the house? So, you could answer this by saying, they take a taxi from the airport to get to the house. To take is either coger or tomar, depending on which part of the world you're in. So, cogen un taxi desde el aeropuerto in order to arrive at the house, para llegar a la casa. Or just, cogen un taxi desde el aeropuerto a la casa. Y finalmente, pregunta número siete. ¿Qué pasa cuando llegan? What happens when they arrive? Well, how would you say, they hear a lot of noise from the neighbors? So, they hear comes from the verb oír, O-I-R, and they hear is oyen. Oyen mucho ruido, ruido being noise. Oyen mucho ruido de los vecinos, from the neighbors. It seems that they are having a party. Now, to have a party, in Spanish is to give a party, dar una fiesta. So, it seems that they are giving a party. Parece que están dando una fiesta. Parece que están dando una fiesta. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. There's lots more in the bonus materials on the website. So there you have it. Hopefully you've found this useful and indeed interesting. The question is, what's going to happen next? ¿Qué va a pasar este verano con Laura y Ayona en España? ¿Va a conocer a muchos amigos, Laura? ¿O va a conocer a algún chico bien educado con quien poder hablar castellano? ¿Cómo serán los vecinos que hacen tanto ruido? ¿Podrá venir Antonio? ¿O quizás tendrá que venir Antonio por algún motivo? Tendréis respuesta a todas estas preguntas en el próximo episodio de Verano Español. And of course you will be waiting a few weeks for that next episode of Verano Español. It's coming up in episode 10 of Showtime Spanish. We'll be back next week with a normal episode. In the meantime, we'd like to say muchas gracias, como siempre, a todos y adiós. Hasta la próxima. You'll be understood from Madrid to Bogota, Peru, Argentina to Nicaragua. No matter where you go, you'll have amigos. Break a leg, take a bow. It's showtime. This podcast was brought to you by the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at www.radiolingua.com. <laughs>